I want to show you how to create complex solutions in Visual Studio. Now a complex solution um, is uh, like, uh, well it's a solution right, but it's got more than one project. If you just, you know, if you've only up to this point ever created, you know, programs uh, for, you know, class or school um, or even where you work, right? If you only just like create a solution and it's got one project in it, um, I'm going to show you how to create a complex solution with multiple projects. Now, why would you want to do this? Okay, um, if you're designing applications in such a way as to reuse components within the application, um, generally you're designing uh, to an architecture that's got multiple layers. Okay, so the what I want to show you is how you would structure your Visual Studio solution to mirror a, an application um, in a multiple tier or multiple layer architecture. Okay, so let's take a look uh, at a diagram that will kind of explain uh, how we're going to kind of set up our, our complex solution. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, we start with a uh, multi-layer architecture. There's our database, right? Um, the upper layer is what I call the infrastructure layer. Okay, this is where our value objects and uh, aka uh, data transfer objects. Everything below, all those three vertical columns are all different layers. They will depend on the infrastructure layer. Next comes the data access layer. This is where our data access objects or DAOs are going to be located. There's usually a one-to-one -one mapping for each of those uh, to database tables, but it could be multiple. The next layer in the middle is the business object layer. Um, this is where our business objects are going to go. Uh, transactions will be controlled here, um, et cetera, et cetera. And they may use multiple DAOs in each BO. Finally, presentation layer. It could be anything. It could be service points. Um, you know, ASP.NET app, MVC, Windows Presentation Foundation, Windows Forms, etc. Whatever. So infrastructure layer is where our value objects are going to go or otherwise data transfer objects or any other component that that is going to be used by any of those other architectural layers. Now, you'll notice I like to draw my architectures horizontally. A lot of people draw them vertically. I could care less, right? But that's the way I draw them. Um, our database is off to the right. We're going to use Microsoft SQL Server. I didn't label it. You could probably use any database, but since I'm doing Visual Studio, we'll use Microsoft. Um, and, uh, and this is a multi-part series, um, as the title suggests. So, you know, over the next several videos, I want to show you, you know, look out, let's structure the, the, the solution. And then, you know, get everything set up and then I'll start fleshing out each of those different architectural layers with at least one or two components um, that, that will then complete a horizontal swath through the architecture from the front to the back, right? Uh, so let's get started. Now, the application I think I'm going to create, um, I'll call it employee training. All right, it won't be a complete app. To a point it will be, there'll be some functionality to it, right? But really the point is to demonstrate that, you know, there's a lot of flexibility with, you know, you know, how, how you know, well, whatever you build, I suppose, is, is not the point. The point is, is that this is a flexible way to, to build uh, applications, right? Um, you have to be smarter than Visual Studio. You got to know when, you know, uh, you can put a component pretty much wherever you want to. Um, you don't necessarily have to do it the way Visual Studio kind of forces your hand. You know, like when you create a project that's a Windows application, it always creates a program file with a main form. You know, you could rename those things and structure that thing pretty much any way you want it. So that's what this is about. All right, so um, let's get going here. Uh, so what I want to do, I'm going to create a new project. Um, let this thing power up and uh, I will let's see as we saw from the from the the diagram the presentation layer could be anything 
right? It could be service points, it could be an ASP.NET app, it could be Windows Presentation Foundation. I'll do Windows Form, uh, a Windows Forms app, all right? Uh, just for, uh, not it's not necessarily a simpler way, right? Sometimes when you're trying to do a concise example, when you're doing web programming, uh, that gets a little complicated and hairy. So I'm going to call this employee training. So the name of my solution is employee training. Right, I want to make sure I capitalize employee. Employee training, um, I'll kind of, you know, throw out some, you know, requirements as we proceed. So it's a, I'm going to start off with a Windows format, but you'll see that, you know, as I put, you know, the other projects in here, this is just the main project. This is going to be our presentation. Okay, we'll, we will add, but then we're going to set dependencies and, and you'll see where, where I'm going with this pretty soon. So we'll create this initial solution. So if I had started with a web project, the ASP.NET project, I would have called that my web layer or, you know, you don't have to call it presentation, but I'll just call that the employee uh, training. Okay. I could have, I could have called it the presentation layer. It doesn't matter, but the overall solution will be employee training. I'm just going to close this window because at this point it really just doesn't matter. All right. So the solution is named employee training and that's okay. I guess I could, let's see if I could rename this. Oh, oh yeah, I could rename that. I'm going to call this presentation. Presentation layer. All right. Now the solution maintains the name employee training and that's fine for my solution. Okay. But I want that project right there since that's going to be, that's my web app right there right I want that I'm not my web app that's my Windows Forms app I want that to be my presentation layer all right now what I want to do is I want to add another project okay add a new project and I'm gonna just make this a class library okay and I'm gonna call this infrastructure infrastructure layer um, you don't necessarily have to put layer in there. I'm going to do it that way. And I'm going to say, okay. Now, um, once we get these basic projects in there, we'll go back and we'll set um, project properties and dependencies. But if you reference that diagram, so I started off with my, I kind of started off with my presentation layer, uh, and that's fine, right? And then I went with my infrastructure layer. This this part right here, this little like setting up the Visual Studio solution is, is not really critical. All right, so new project. And again, it's going to be a class library. And I'm going to call it uh, uh, data access layer. Okay. Now I'm going to create a new project. Add new project. Uh, I always get a little nervous when Windows 10 starts installing updates when I'm trying to do something. All right, class library. So this one's going to be business object layer. Business object layer. So now, um, just to review, so what's going to go into our, uh, let's say our, we know what's going to be in the presentation layer. We're going to make a Windows app, okay? In the infrastructure layer, we're going to put things, objects, cla you know, classes, right? We're going to define classes and functionality for value objects or uh, otherwise known as data transfer objects. These objects, you know, and anything else that is uh, that's going to be used by any of these other layers in our architecture in the application data access layer is where we're going to you know make every effort to locate all our data uh, any any object that interfaces with the database okay is going to go in the data access layer um, now business object layer uh, is going to be where we we round up like any complex interactions, you know, uh, any any process, you know, we might be from the business uh, from the business 
object layer standpoint, we may be calling multiple DAOs in order to, you know, complete a transaction. Our transaction control is going to be located in our business object layer. Um, we may hit, you know, you could hit multiple databases, right? But your data access layer, usually there's a one-to-one -one mapping between DAOs and tables in the database. That's not necessarily a hard, fast rule. All right, so um, so now now that we have this thing, right, we're not going to build it right now. What we need to do is we need to set properties. So we could go into each of these projects here, take a look at the properties. All right, and what we want to do is we kind of make sure that when we build the project, um, everything is going to a particular uh, output, right? So each of these guys, uh, well, let's just let's just do it this way here. Let's get rid of that. 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 All right. Let's go up to the solution. Let's take a look at the solution properties. If everything depends on the infrastructure layer, let me move this over here. In the solution properties, this is where we set our dependencies between each project within the solution. Okay, so we've got the startup project uh, is going to be the presentation layer. Why? Why is that going to be? Well, our Windows app, right, is usually going to have probably is where the main function, the, you know, right now it's got program, right? That's the only thing that can run. These guys here, uh, you know, business object layer, data access layer, infrastructure layer, these guys are class libraries. So we can't, you know, run those guys on their own. So presentation layer is really going to be the layer that runs when we actually, if we debug and run the project or run the solution, right? Um, but back to the properties for for the whole solution. I want to set the project dependencies. I'm over here. Startup project is fine. Presentation layer. You could change, right? We can't change it now, but if you had multiple, you know, pro pro projects that had different executable files, then that's where we would set the startup project. Project dependencies is really what we want to focus on. And we're going to start with, uh, yeah, we could start with, let's start with data access layer. Because if you go back to your, to that diagram, the infrastructure layer, right? Infrastructure layer, pretty much nobody, everybody depends on it, okay? But it depends on nobody. In other words, it's going to depend on fundamental libraries from, you know, Windows and maybe third-party libraries. But fundamentally, the infrastructure layer, you know, does not depend on any of the other projects within this solution, right? So, uh, let's, so infrastructure layer, all these will be unchecked, right? Infrastructure layer does not depend on anything. That's fine. The data access layer depends on the infrastructure layer. It does not depend on the business object layer, and it does not depend on the presentation layer. So I'm going to apply that. The business object layer depends on the infrastructure layer and the data access layer. You see what's going on here? Just refer to that diagram. The dependencies, you know, everything depends on infrastructure, uh, data, you know, and infrastructure depends on nothing. Uh, data uh, access layer depends on infrastructure and it does not depend on uh, business object, right, or business object layer or the presentation layer does not depend on those. So hit apply. And then we select presentation layer. Presentation layer depends on all three of these other projects. Hit apply. Um, code analysis, we don't need to mess around with that. Debug source files, we don't need. Configuration properties, we're good there. Any CPU, fine. Okay. Right, we're good. Now we can compile this thing. It doesn't matter at this point, right? We could run the solution. It's going to just pop up the default form. I believe that's what's going to happen. Let's take a look here. I think we should just get a window. Whatever the default form one for the presentation layer was. 
Okay, while this thing is building, uh, I just want to say that this is pretty much it for this video, right? We've created a complex solution. We have uh, based that solutions of organization on a diagram with a multi-layer architecture, okay? And then uh, in the next subsequent set of videos uh, that follow this one, I'm going to start adding functionality to each of these layers, starting with the infrastructure layer. Okay, start with the infrastructure layer. I may even, uh, you know, show you how to create the database, right? But the database is interesting because depending on what technology we use, right? So I've, I've built it, right? Let's go ahead and start and see what it does. Um, depending on what type of technology you use like for example if I if you wanted to build if you wanted to use uh, you know the entity framework okay then um, your you know you you could actually create the database you know from scratch using entity framework using designer I might show you how to do that or you could just if you if you go straight to the database and create your tables right you define your tables and and we're not going to have too many complex tables in this application and then you could have entity framework then read the database and figure out oh well, that's already created for me right and and generate code that way or you could use enterprise library and hand code your own DAOs and do everything yourself. So there's multiple different ways to proceed. So here's our project running, right? It just pops up a form. This form is not using anything. It's not depend. It's not using anything from the infrastructure layer. But we have our uh, complex solution based on a on an architecture that has multiple layers, and uh, and that's it for this video. So if you have any questions or comments. Don't hesitate to email me, rick at pulpfreepress.com, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video, part two.